Hi, I am Kimmy with On William Street, and we are here to help you become a more confident quilter, from the piecing to the quilting and everything in between. And this week, we are going to talk about some different quilting ideas for our Lone Star Star Block. So the, this block has a lot of diamonds in it. That's not really a shape that we've come across in a lot of our other blocks. So I'm gonna share some fun different ways that you can fill those in with your quilting motifs. For this first design, I'm gonna start with a wishbone in just the yellow diamond. So I'm gonna go ahead and move in and out, filling that shape completely, but I'm not going to worry about going into the dark green areas. And this is a really fun motif that you can really make fit any size, shape, or square. After that, I'm gonna do something a little bit different in the green and I went in with some straight lines echoing the path of the diamond to really just kind of offset and add contrast to um, the different elements. Now that that's done, for the outer areas, I want to treat that back, those back areas as if they are one continuous element, like it's sitting behind the yellow and the green um, diamonds on top. So I'm gonna go ahead and echo around the outside but I'm not going to put any lines where the green overlaps so that it looks like it's one, they're joining in the background. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and do a fun fill to fill in between those two lines around the entire shape. For the next design, I'm gonna treat the green and the yellow areas as one shape. I'm not going to try to do something different in each of the different colors. And I'm going to go ahead and start with a feather that just fills each of those different diamonds. The reason that I chose the yellow and the dark green as opposed to the other one is because that white can either be read as part of the star or as background, whereas the green and the yellow definitely gets read differently than the background. So it just depends on how you want your final look uh, quilt to look. After I filled in all four of those with feathers, we'll go ahead and look at the other sections. And with this one, I decided to do something different in the light green and the gray squares. With it, I am still going to have the white be background in this um, quilting plan. I'll show you another one here that um, includes it as part of the star. So I went with some straight lines, just echoing the lines the same direction as the, the green diamonds and kind of away from the feathers almost looks like you're giving them a little bit of some wings there. And then we'll do something a little bit different in, in the light gray. Like I said, anytime that I'm mixing quilting plants, I like to have a combination of curved and straight lines. On that contrast, it's just excellent to put into um, design elements and figure out, um, to, it, it's excellent to put in your design elements to give that contrast and interest to the fi finished piece. So with this, what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to echo around each of the gray areas, and then again, fill them in. I'm gonna use some pebbles here on this one to fill in each of those areas. So this design, like I said, I'm gonna go ahead and show where I would use the white as being part of the star and not part of the background. I'm just going to echo around the entire shape to kind of offset this center area. And then again, I'm going to put one a little bit closer in. Part of me is because there's, part of the reason for this is there's a lot of lines going on in this, a lot of seams in the center. And I want to avoid quilting that because it can be hard to go over. So if I kind of offset that. And then the other is just to really make that star shape kind of stand out. Um, those would be marked and even I would definitely take the time to measure in and make sure that all of those little lines start and stop in the same point so that they don't look wonky. And then do a fill around in between the two areas um, to fill in that star shape. After I fill in that center area, I'm going to just again with some straight lines um, echoing the shape in the dark green areas. Then I think what I'm gonna go ahead and do actually is in the yellow area, I'm gonna echo them as well, but I'm going to not point so that they go in and out to match um, and follow along the dark green areas. And then in the light green area, I want something a little bit different. So I'm gonna throw in some ribbon candies there. I'm 
when this one gets all done, um, it kind of really reminds me of a snowflake kind of a design uh, with lots of different little frilly elements around it. And then just to finish it off in each of the gray squares, I'm going to go ahead and echo and do the same design that I did in the yellow, just so that it doesn't get too busy. There's a lot going on in this block. And actually, as I look at it, I want to put an echo in the center area as well, just so that it really sets off and really stands out. For this final design, I'm going to do actually the same design in both in all of the squares. I'm going to treat the green and the yellow as a shape. I'm going to treat the white, light green, and gray as a shape. And I'm just going to do this back and forth serpentine line. But when I go to the next area, I'm going to serpentine the opposite direction. So it looks like it kind of has a spine down the center line between the two blocks. And just a smooth curve up and down. And this one really adds a lot of movement to the final design. And then just repeat. For the all over design, I'm going to show you a couple different ways that you can break this down. Um, you can use you know, whatever fills or different things you want to fill in these shapes. So the first one, I'm going to connect every other star and kind of create these diamonds around every other star. And then um, in the spaces around those with the leftover square spaces, I'm just going to put a little bit of an echo. So that's still going to make those other areas, those other stars stand out that aren't framed out nicely. It's just going to make them stand out from the background a little bit. And then you can see how you could go in and fill those in with lines, with swirls, with pebbles, with feathers, just whatever kind of fills you like to use. It gives you a way to easily fill in those different spaces and to have some fun uh, custom quilting. Also, I think I'm going to put a line around the um, diamonds just to put an echo in there. Again, I like to use those channels and I would leave that blank and that's just going to um, give your eye a place to rest and really make it stand out from the rest of the, the quilting. For this final design, I'm going to put a square around the star, but I'm going to connect it behind it so it doesn't come around the outside. So it's going to really make that star pop. It's going to make it look like it's sitting on top of the quilting because it overlaps. I'm just going to put in a few different um, stars here so we can see the final look as it all comes together. And then again, I'm going to put an echo around it. And I actually probably wouldn't do much quilting um, in those empty spaces. If it ended up being bigger than you wanted, um, you could definitely put some some small background fill, but I would keep it small and tight, some super tight stipples, some little pebbles, something like that, so that it doesn't overpower it. So it's gonna be a small area. Um, you don't want it to look not fill properly, and you'd wanna keep it super dense so that it definitely stays as a background element. Then in the area in the negative space that I've created now with this checkerboard pattern, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna fill each of those. I'm gonna alternate two different designs. So in this first one, I'm going to go ahead and put in some swirls. And then because I want them to really stand out from each other in this area, in the next um, alternate area, I'm going to put in some straight lines. And I'm just going to do vertical lines for this, and I'm just going to keep them all vertical throughout the whole quilt. And just to give you a little bit better idea of what this is going to look like finished, let me throw in a few more of the um, background check here. And just throw in a little bit more of a fill just so you can kind of see how it's all going to play. I would alternate up here as well so that this is going to be our um, swirls. And then over above the first swirl block, I'll go ahead and fill in with the straight lines there. As always, you can find a blank copy of this block um, on our blog post. So go ahead and print that out so that you can sketch and doodle on it and come up with some different ideas and practice some of the different motifs that you like. And then set those aside, hang on to them so that when we have our quilt top all done next month, um, you'll be ready to go ahead and get it quilted and have lots of fun ideas and ready to go for that. If you have any questions, let us know. Also, don't forget to check us out on Facebook and Instagram where we post lots of fun pictures. And subscribe to our YouTube channel if you have not already and hit the bell so that you're notified whenever we post a new video, and we'll see you next week.